Whoa, I never heard that before. Um, hello, everybody. Thanks again for coming out to uh, Community um, Cooking with Jamar and uh, my partner, Jamar Ruff, here at the Coos Head Food Co-op. We're just talking um, next month will be our one year anniversary and um, Jamar's gonna make some tacos two ways. We already have them up on the Coos Bay website. Um, and what was what else was I was gonna say? I lost my train of thought. Oh, um, I just muted everybody, but if you guys have questions while Jamar's um, cooking, feel free to respectfully unmute and ask questions or put your questions into the chat box and I'll feed them to Jamar. You ready, buddy? Yes, I don't know why I'm having some internet connection. It is a okay. You look up <laughs> in our end. Okay, okay. So I don't know what's going on, but I saw some pauses. So hopefully, we got to cross fingers. <laughs> um, so welcome everyone to cooking, community cooking with the co-op. My name is Jermaine. I'm the outreach coordinator here at Kusef Food Co-op. Um, tonight we are cooking ramen, and inside of in our in our test kitchen here at the co-op, we have Alan that is working different cameras and different lights behind the scenes. So we'll, you, it'll, be looking a lot, it'll be looking a lot different tonight. Um, so first, let's start with our pot. So I have the pot. So the first thing we want to do is start building the base for our broth. And so I have my pot. Can you see me? Yes, excellent. Okay. Okay. Very awesome. cool. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So um, in the pot, I'm going to turn it on. I'm not going to add any olive oil or anything to the pot yet. What I want to do is I'm going to be toasting the onions, the ginger, and the star onions, and the clove. So basically, when ramen is all about the broth. Um, it is all about what goes into the broth and taking your time to build good broth as well. Um, so what we're going to do is just kind of toast it, toast our onions. We're going to toast our ginger all in one pot along with our ginger. And I will show you um, the first thing. So first is prepping your onions. If you want, if you want to see how um, my onions look, I have them in big chunks. <laughs> I have them in big chunks because like I said, we're just going to be once the pot heats up, we're going to start basically charring our onions. So we're going to char our onions, char our, um, our ginger, char our garlic, and then we'll add the aromatics in there as well. Cool. Jamar, I'm going to interrupt you really quick because uh, Kathy had a good question. Uh, Kathy okay. had asked if uh, you signed up for community cooking, if you have to sign up each month. No, you can use the same link every month and you'll get reminders from me like about 24 hours before each one. Great question, Kathy. Go ahead, Jamar. Sorry. Hey, no, that was a great question. So as I'm, I'm letting my pan heat up, once it gets to a little hot, I have it over medium, a little over medium. I'm going to start dropping in my onion hole in my pot. Drop my onions in, and then I'm going to, and for my ginger, I just rock chopped my ginger as well. As you can see, um, I have some big ones. I have some small ones. And I know Jamie um, reached out this morning about the ginger as well. And we're gonna, I know you were saying about, um, is it okay to use dried ginger as well? And it is okay. And Jamar, Joelle wanted to know if they should leave the cloves whole. Yes. The garlic cloves. Yes. Cool. Um, and if, if it feels like it's a little bit too much, you can chop them a little bit. Um, if, if that's something that you wanted to do because I know if anyone knows me, I love cooking with garlic. Sometimes it can be intense for other for other folks, but this is all about making the cooking, making the recipe your own. Definitely. So I'm gonna like kind of rough mine and then I'm gonna throw some whole pieces in there as well. So with basically we have all of our things, our onions, the ginger, and the garlic into a dry pot. Dry pot meaning no olive oil, no nothing. And the goal is to char it, to char it, let it cook on all the sides. And you'll start seeing that the onions, they look like they're burning a little bit and that is okay. That's what we want. Cool. And you um, said medium heat? Yeah, medium heat. Cool. And so as far as the, um, as far as the aromatics, which would be the star anise and the, and the cloves, 
when you look at the, the history and the traditions of ramen, most times if someone has a gas stove, they'll be like charring the onions with the gas stove. Um, but you also can do it in a, um, in a pot by dry, by dry um, charring it basically. And so I am, once, once my onions and everything start moving around and you'll start smelling the onions cook, then I'm gonna start adding my aromatics. So the recipe calls for two star onions and it calls for a fourth of a teaspoon a whole clove. And that, that was two what, Jamar? Two star anise. So the star, the star anise. anise. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay, so. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. How star anise was. And then the clove, the whole clove is like. Cool. And so I'm going to throw in three because, you know, I'm cooking for the staff. So. <laughs> He's got to make extra for his coworkers. <laughs> got to make extra for anyone that passes the deli. Like Jamar, what are you cooking? I'm like, oh, you have to taste it. <laughs> and now the overhead cam is awesome. Hey, it brings you right into the cooking. You know, sometimes you want to know what it looks like, and you want to know, you know, all of these things, and it's like this is the perfect. This is like a perfect solution. So as you see, you still want to move, be moving around your items in your um in your pan as well. This makes me really excited. Me too. <laughs> like, I'm so hungry I already. Like, this is not a I good like start. Uh, I like authentic food, but I love authentic cooking like in a flash, especially on a Thursday. I don't want to be like slaving over a stove, but <laughs> This broth goes a long way, so you can you can do it one day, and then like okay, I'm gonna heat it up tomorrow or things like that. Um, but it gives you a base. I can come home after a hard day, look in my fridge, and I'm like, okay, I always got ginger, I always got garlic, I always got onions, you know. <laughs> and the cool thing about you know buying bulk seasoning is that if a recipe calls for two star onions, I'm only getting two. I don't have to commit to a whole jar. Jamar, uh, Amber wants to know if, um, do they have star anise at the co-op? Yes. Cool. Good question. Thank you. And it helps too if you if you want to make authentic food, but you're on a budget. You know, because sometimes these seasonings, especially, um, can be kind of spendy. So whenever it's like, I'm getting seasonings, I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't know if I'm ever going to cook with this again. So... <laughs> And I have commitment issues, so I don't like this. Like, do I want to buy this, invest in this, and then have it sit in my counter, in my cabinet and go away? You know, so this takes away the pressure that we may feel. So I'm, my onions are charring. I'm turning them over, and I'm moving it around. We want to make our have our onions get some color. Nice. Everybody doing good? Anybody have any questions? Looking good, Jamar. Thank you. I'm gonna throw some more clothes in mine um, because I'm making like a big pot. <laughs> Yum. Kathy asked Jamar, if you don't like anise, is there a good substitute? Ooh, I so I think the good substitute is maybe just not using it because the anise is it's such a distinct taste, mm -hmm. you know. So um, you don't it you do have choices. I think as far as the aromatics go, you can if you're if you're doing it with clove, that may be enough. Yeah. Um, but star anise it just gives it a whole different um a whole different flavor, and it you know whenever I'm looking at certain things. I like to stay within like how um, how authentic it can be, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm a fan of like good ramen and I'm a foodie, so it's like it needs to be like the real deal, sure. <laughs> as closest to it. But you know, I am a sucker for substitution because it gives me that whole thing of making a recipe my own, you know. Um, so it seems like you still have a good base with the garlic, the cloves, the onion. Mm -hmm. Good question, Kathy. 
And when we like wake up, whenever you're cooking with aromatics and things like that, when you're like frying them in a pan, it always wakes up the aromatic, you know, versus just popping them in there and then um, into a stock. It's basically go ahead and start out with the aromatics first and then add your stock to it. Your, it, it just wakes up the flavor. Amber said, ramen is something that is so easy to personalize. It is something we make often. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's too. what I like about it, especially with like some of the, um, like the toppings. Like as you look at the recipe, it has red, um, red cabbage, um, carrots, it has green onions, daikon, jalapeno, lime, bok choy. You can basically, and this is a fun dish that I like to do, like say for instance, if I have friends coming over, where I have so many different, so many different toppings in the middle of the table. And then I just fix up the ramen with the noodles and the broth and they can just make it their own. Awesome. My wife just usually mixes in whatever we have, like egg, various vegetables. Yes. Um, Mark wants to know, is there any oil or water in the pot? No, Mark, good question. No. It's a dry pot. Sorry, Mark, I, I, I noticed you came in right after he said that. Okay, so as my my onions and everything are getting charred up, that's what I'm loving. The darker I see, the better. <laughs> yeah, Mark. So he he's he's uh charring this in a dry pot at medium heat. And so in the pot, if you're just now joining us, in the pot there is onions. I have garlic. I have um, ginger. There's cloves. There's stir in it, and that's it. Now um. It does call for eight cups of veggie stock. Eight cups of veggie stock basically is two boxes. Um, two boxes of a one quart box. And now it's at the right time to go ahead and start adding my broth so I can build my broth. Cool. So I'm gonna start. Ooh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Add a little bit more. I always keep your you a towel handy in case anything spills. And so now I'm adding a little bit more. Cool. So how much are you putting in there total again? So I'm doing I'm doing eight cups. Eight, eight cups, cups. Eight, eight, two boxes. Um, but if you want to reduce it in this in this a small pot and you were like, well, Jamar, that's too much. That's too much stuff. Um, you can reduce it to like four cups. That's just one. A four cup equals one quart, basically. Probably good for two people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Jamar's making a lot because he's cooking for staff at the co op. But I am following the recipe as well. Yeah. But of course. <laughs> <laughs> if I if hope you, so. <laughs> I, I hope so. Right. It's like, oh, Jamar, get back on track, please. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is. I don't know if everyone was able to find the um, oh oh the umami the vegetable umami udon oh. was everyone able to find that okay okay this is a real good ingredient I'm um, seeing some yes nods I'm seeing a couple bottles <laughs> okay so basically this is vegetable umami um, it just wakes it up it, it's kind of like a salt replacement. Oh. Um, whenever you're cooking. So it is definitely, and we just brought it into the co-op um, and it's on sale. So it's like, you know, I'm sh I always shop on my budget. <laughs> you know, I want good food, but I don't want to really break the bank. So, um, and it's going to call for four tablespoons of this. Okay. So, I'm excited. So I got my measuring cup, or you can eyeball it. <laughs> I... <laughs> Starting out, I'm always using a measuring um, measuring spoon. Cool. And I'm adding this to my garage. Do you have a question, Jamie? You can unmute. Yeah, so how much do you scale back? I think you said it was eight tablespoons. So if we're doing six cups, then just do three? Or what's- Oh, it, oh wait, what? Are we talking oh. broth? No, the, the umami stuff, like if you're- Oh, it's only four tablespoons. Broth. What was it? Four eight, tablespoons. Four tablespoons. So if you want to cut back with just two, if you're only doing the four cups of broth, you can cut back with just two. Okay, thanks. 
Good question. Oh, I lost count how many I poured in there. I'm just going to put an extra one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we threw you off course there. <laughs> hey, no, that's what happens. <laughs> but I don't know. If I'm cooking at home, there's usually so much going on. Yeah. Um, I am like an extreme multitasker. <laughs> it's always stuff going on, you know, where it's like, Shamar, what was that? What were you doing? <laughs> So now that I have that going on, I'm going to move this and I'm going to go ahead and put my noodles on. So right. right now in my pot, I have the onions, the garlic, the aromatics. You can see everything is just floating mm. um, and it looks really delicious. <laughs> um, it's very appealing. So mm. I'm going to take this off of here and I'm going to move this to my cooktop and then I'm going to bring, go ahead and start getting my noodles ready. Cool. It's noodle time. Because the goal is to have everything done around the same time. Yeah. So I have this pot going. Right. So are we boiling water for noodles? Is that what? Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, get, your pot, get a pot ready for your noodles. So right now I have two pots. One is for bok choy because we're going to steam the bok choy and then the other one is for the noodles. And the noodles that I am using is organic noodles. It's the fine udon noodles. And I like the fact of when they come in the packages, you can, you have the choice. So it comes in a package where there's three and say for instance, if you were cooking for yourself or just cooking for two people, you have like choices. So you can only use, you don't have to use the whole three. You can use like two, and save one for later if you would like to. I'm going to use three, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, those probably expand a bit, don't they? Yeah, they do. They do. They expand. A, they expand a bit. So, um, you can use two starting out. And Amber added for anyone trying to avoid carbs, she uses tofu shirataki spaghetti noodles. She gets off Amazon. <laughs> Thanks, Amber. Okay. Thank you, Amber. And so in my um, in my pot, I'm going to drizzle some olive oil. And I always, whenever I'm making noodles, I always salt, salt the water like I'm salting the sea. <laughs> Just because I want some flavor. So I'm doing, you know, a little salt bath for my noodles. Just a bunch? Just a <laughs> Salt the sea. Well, you can do <laughs> Okay, Paul, stop getting me off course. <laughs> Sorry, I'll shut up now. Uh, I'm doing a pinch. I'm doing a pinch, but you want to salt like the sea. Um, so in my in my noodle pot, I have the noodles. I have drizzled some olive oil because you don't want them to stick. And then I also have um, some salt just for flavor as well. Now, it's important that I don't always, um, because you're adding, you're going to be adding broth to your noodles. You don't have to get them all the way done, but the noodle package um, that we use, it takes about, I would say 10 to 15 minutes to cook. So um, you want everything to be kind of like, so I got my broth over there. I'm forgetting about that, letting it do its thing. Letting it do its thing. Um, I'm simmering it. I have it on a seven, but that's just because getting it to a rolling boil, but then um, you want to reduce it. So you want to keep your eyes on it. Now I have my pot where I have my noodles, my noodles, and then I have my pot already getting ready for my bok choy. The goal is you want to make sure everything is done um, at the same time, you know. Any questions? Yeah, actually, Kathy wanted to know if you're watching your salt intake, does it do any good to put sodium-free salt in there? Yeah, of course, and, and that is a complete option. So if you're watching your sodium intake and you're like smart, I don't want to use the salt. You can you and you also um, a good replacement for that is Himalayan pink salt. What well. kind? Himalayan pink salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good stuff. As well, um, but yeah, it is okay to not use salt. Um, if if that is something that you're like, you know what, I have to watch this. It's important to be vigilant about that, and that is always a thing where um, whenever I'm cooking and I follow recipes, that's like, well, add this much salt. I always taste the food first. And then I want to make the, you know, I like control 
over food, over <laughs> meat. So I'm going to taste it first. And then I'm like, okay, it, it's fine. You know, because sometimes you don't need to add salt to things. You know, so. So Kathy yeah. can fake salt to taste. Yes. <laughs> and most times when you're cooking for folks, they're already going to add salt anyway. Right. So um, nine times out of 10. Now we're going to move over. So we have our noodles on. We have our stock going over there. We have our noodles right here. The next thing is our bok choy. And so I use, I love bok choy, by the way. Yeah, it's good I planted stuff. mine. I planted mine a little too early. It's going to feed, and that is okay. <laughs> just, means, just means that I'll get to put somewhere in the ground. <laughs> are but, those from um, your garden? No, these are not from my garden. Oh. I have those at home. This is from the co-op. Nice. But I do kind of like whenever I have an abundance, it's just like, okay, everyone, you will now get greens. You now get bok choy. Um, and so what I've done is I cook. I've cut them into four into fours, four pieces, basically. And mm -hmm. so, as you can see right here, can you see with my knife? Let me move this away. Oh, yeah. We can see it. Okay. And so, I just want to make sure. Okay, so, I have my bok choy right here. Then I am cooking, cutting it down the middle. It falls into this. But now, sometimes your bok choy is going to be a little smaller because you're using baby bok choy. So, it may not be necessary for you to cut it a, a fourth another time. You get to make that decision. But um, what I'll do is I'll cut it down and I'll cut it one more. And then they turn into little pieces because everyone's gonna get one of these things, one of these um, pieces in their, in their ramen. Cool. And Jamar, do you, you have a little bit of water in that pot, right? Yes, cause I'm steaming it. You don't, right, I'm not right. gonna, you don't have to fill it up but I do have some water. It's smoking because I've already, you know, sometimes on the cooktops, they may not get to a roll and boil like you would like them to. So it's a lot easier to troubleshoot and get it already um, going. But I'm going to add my bok choy to the hot water. And they're going to start cooking down. They're going to start reducing. Nice. And I haven't added any salt to this water at, at all cool. because you have the broth. And sometimes whenever I'm getting veggie broth, I always go for the low sodium broth as well. Yeah. Or if if I was at home, I normally keep all my straps, when, especially when I'm doing food prep, um, like my onions and things like that, and I'm able to build, build my own broth. And that way you have full control of what how much sodium is in it. Sometimes you may not even need to add um, salt as well. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, so now on to prepping um, the things that are going to go as far as our topping. So right now we have the bok choy um, still cooking down. Basically, we're steaming the bok choy without a steamer in a water, hot water, boiling bath. And then we have the noodles going. We have our base. Our broth. Our broth is going as well, and now we're going to just start prepping our, um, so I have red cabbage, I have green onions, I have some daikon radish, and I have limes and jalapenos. The jalapenos are optional because sometimes it can be really spicy, depending on, I made salsa the other day and it was pretty spicy, and they're like, Jamar, why didn't you tell us? So, <laughs> fair warning, okay? So, um, Amber added that low sodium usually doesn't have extra sugar either. So, good point. Go. Amber, you are like awesome. <laughs> she should be in the kitchen with you. Right. Where are you at? Can you um <laughs> <laughs> so um in the ingredients we were looking at cabbages, right? And I'm all for like going to the produce department and asking those questions as far as can you cut this in half for me? Just because I may not want to invest in a whole red cabbage. Can you cut it down? Is that an option? Um and most times it's a courtesy that they do. Um, I, ha I think um, Joe jo, um, had came in and she was getting her thing for the um, for the cooking class. She said, Jamar, can you cut my cabbage? I'm like, I would love to cut your cabbage. <laughs> so, so they'll um, cut your cabbage at the co-op. 
Yeah. yeah. But honestly, this is an open event. I mean, most produce departments, they just don't get asked to. They all have a, um, a produce prepping station, so that's always going to be an option. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I want to move this to the camera one second. Okay. Oops. My box toy, so that way you can kind of see what I have going on. Now, for the cabbages, it is called for shredded cabbage. And how I typically do it is if I'm going to cut my cabbage in half, I typically remove the bottom part and then I kind of shred. But as you can see how um, it just depends on if I cut like this, I may run a risk of cutting my finger. I was going to say. <laughs> you know, so what I do is I start small and I may start at the edge and I'm and I'm cutting, I'm shredding, you know. Yeah, nice. So that way it's not me. Okay, I'm about to cut my fingers off, you know. Please don't. And you get nice shreds. Can you see those? Oh, yeah, really well. Thank you, okay. Alan. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so I'm adding that as a topping. And then I have um, my daikon radishes. And some. this is how I cut mine. They look like half moons. Oh, cool. And this is how I did it. So I cut it in half. I cut the daikon in half. And then it creates a flat surface. So that way I'm not... If it was whole, you would have to worry about it rolling and things like that. So as I cut it in half, I'm getting closer to the edge. I'm turning my fingers like this, and I am controlling. So that way I'm making nice, even slices. Safe slices. Yes. Jamara, Amber wants to know where you get your knives. She said that's her biggest problem in the kitchen, her knives. You have to invest in knives, <laughs> you know? Um, that's the thing. It's like sometimes, but what I like to do is I like to go to the thrift stores and get, I don't have, they don't have to be like the high fancy knives. I'll go to some of the thrift stores and find, you know, that perfect knife that works for me. And then like, we're at a co-op, this knife, um, <laughs> means a lot to me because I use this when I worked in produce. So it's now, <laughs> it's stuck with me, babe. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yes, I would say look around at some of the knives that are around town. Start with the thrift store that if you're not trying to invest in a whole lot, figure out what is comfortable for you. Some folks do not like a big blade. It's, it can be intimidating. Sure. So here's another knife that I use as well. This is short nice. and it might, depending on if you're just starting out, it might be something that you really feel comfortable. But you want to make sure that the grip is good. And then there's, my say for instance, this knife is not my favorite because it kind of hurts my hand when I'm doing the prepping. So something that I can do a lot of prepping with, something that is comfortable, something that I can move around and I have mobility, but not intimidating and making me feel like I'm gonna cut my finger. What about sharpening? Sharpening is important. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Sharpening, Sharpening is important because, I mean, most times when you're prepping, you're like, why isn't it choppy like this? You might be working with a dull knife, you know, um, and dull knives also can be dangerous as well. So you want to make sure that um, your knives are sharpened. I like this one is very sharp. That's why, you know, I kind of be mindful of when I am cooking. And so. this is where I, this is where I plug the library's library of things where you can actually check out a knife sharpener. Oh. Eh? Okay, now that, <laughs> who would have known? <laughs> or a spiralizer or an instant pot. We have a lot of cooking tools you can check out at the Coos Bay Library. Okay, now that's huge. That is huge. Love that feature. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so now with my green onions, I have the green onions kind of cut at an angle. And so what I'm doing is I cut the bottom off where the root is. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it laying straight, but I'm turning my knife. Well, let's 
use this knife. <laughs> I'm turning my knife at an angle. Okay, so you see how it looks like an acute angle. And I think I might have put that in there. <laughs> at a, oh, chopped at an angle. Okay, because if I were to just chop it, you know, straight, then that may not work for me, right? Gotcha. Because then I just have feet. Balls. Chunks. Yeah, chunks. What I'm going for is more of a angle. Where it's oh, like. gotcha. So, let me remove this. Yeah. That was totally in the way. Okay. And Alan, I want you to know, Jamie D says this setup is so great. And, and Amber said, ugh, I invested in Cutco. Fancy, but not the best. <laughs> yeah. So as, long as, as long as you keep it sharp, that's the important thing. That is the important thing. Thank you. So I am making nice, even chops. And I'm going all the way down. Nice. So I'm cutting it at an angle. I think we're all just mesmerized by your chopping skills. Oh my gosh. Oh, y'all actually get a chance to actually see them. I don't. <laughs> so now I'm moving that over there. And it calls for grated carrots as well. I've already grated my carrots, but I ended up slicing them, slicing them so that way I like texture. Has, has everybody cut their carrots up? Oh, you're like. Some have. Okay, got them done. Stacy, how are you doing? Stacy, you good? I don't think she can hear us right now. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna check on my noodles. Yeah, those are probably almost done, huh? Mine, it's important like take one out and try it. Mm. Okay, mine already. Is that an al dente? Al dente. <laughs> <laughs> are they? Okay, so now we pull it off of the heat. Okay. We are like plugging right along. And now. We're cooking. Yes, we are. Let me get my strainer. I'm going to strain my noodles. <laughs> when I tell you my glasses fall off, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, Jamar. Now, Kathy said, do you still make it al dente when cooking Asian? LOL. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't want your noodles to turn into mush. Totally. You know, what, I, what I found is like, and typically whenever you're cooking with um, Asian cuisine, most times they're making their noodles fresh. Yeah. So it's a preferred way to just like make them, roll them, drop them, pull them out, and then add them to some steaming hot broth. Yeah, I so, love homemade udon noodles. <laughs> yeah. What I'm going to do is clean off my station because now, oh, I dropped the fork. It is okay. We get to roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, there's another where that came from. Yes. And now I'm going to bring my broth back over because it has been. Nice. And so I have my noodles. Okay, so I have my noodles going. Well, I have my noodles. They're not going. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> They're ready. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> if you can't laugh at yourself, you know, it is it, it, okay. If you can't um, so, laugh at yourself, you're in the wrong place. Yes, you are. And I'm not judging you either. <laughs> but, <laughs> of course not. Um, so my stuff is ready. I have, mm, okay. Nice. So, I, how is everybody else's stock smelling? And How's everybody's you know, stock doing? It's a little hot. So right now I have reduced the heat on mine because I still want to taste my, I want to be able to taste it without it burning my mouth. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> and so I'm also going to slice my limes up as well because in my, in my perfect ramen world, um, it just wouldn't be fair to not have lime in our ramen. And I am, I have it like this, and then I'm gonna turn it over to this side. It's always important to cut on a flat, on a flat side, and then I'm cutting wedges. Oh, okay. And so when I cut a wedge, I just wrote, turn it like that, then I'm moving it and I'm turning it over one more time. Nice. I'm moving it and then I'm, and there we have it, folks. So nice to be able to see your cutting techniques. <laughs> okay, so I am at the place, at the point where I want to start plating. How is everybody else feeling about that? Everybody with us? <laughs> Amber wants to know if you're for hire. <laughs> hey. We can always talk about that, but no, I'm not for hire. <laughs> I'm not for hire, but I would love to come and cook for you. <laughs> so the, the, the thing about cooking is that it is my happy place. I can have a crazy busy week like we were just talking about. Um, but when I get in the kitchen and I'm with my people, like that is where I have the most fun, you know? So it is, the goal is to not have the kitchen be the scary place um, it gives, it allows, this cooking class allows you to come into the kitchen, get a little bit more comfortable, cook some of the things that you always wanted to cook, but did not know where to start. And it allows you to get a little bit more comfortable with ingredients that you probably never cooked with before. Definitely. So I'm going to add my noodles. Adding my noodles to my pot. So not my pot, but not my pot. Don't add your noodles to your pot. Add your noodles to your bowl. Okay. Your, <laughs> I'm glad I caught that. Add my and, noodles to my uh, Related to that, Joanne did ask, do you put the noodles in the broth? No, what I'm going to do is you put it in your bowl, and then oh, you're going to yes, add yes. your broth on top of it. I got you. So, and I have my ladle. And what I'm, what I want to do is just only get the broth. I want to keep, keep the aromatics, keep the onions, keep the garlic to the side and the ginger. Only thing I'm interested in is that delicious broth. Yeah. And so what I'm doing is now I'm adding You gonna fill the bowl? Yes. Cool. I'm going in for another. Okay. Nice. Now, then the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to add my bok choy, cause that should be ready. Add my bok choy. And what I like to do is, we like to be delicate with it, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it around because with the bowl that we're doing, we're, we're painting the picture. We are painting the picture. And so I have a cloth, so I'm going to put that back in my pot. And it looks like I want maybe one more bok choy, but I want the bok choy to be all going the same way. Okay. Food art. Hey, there you go. And I'm using my tongue. And now what I get to do is start adding my toppings. Nice. And so 
I have. Oh, what do I want to have first? Okay, so I think what I you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I'll do is start building around. So I'm gonna start adding my cabbages. All right, I'm cabbage first. Cab and I'm going around. I'm going around the around the center. And then at the top, I'm gonna add some of my carrots. I must say, Alan had perfect timing with the camera equipment because this really needs to be seen from above. <laughs> okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and then, oh, okay. So what I'm going to do is add my green onion. So now I'm coming in, going into the center of it. And I have my daikon. I'm not placing the daikon with the purple. It looks like you put the green with the green. Yeah. Some definite color coordination here. <laughs> You're eating with your eyes, right? Yes. Okay, so now you have a choice if you want to add the um, add the jalapenos. Completely up to you. I'm going to add maybe two. Cool. I probably don't want to overdo it with those. Mm-mm. -mm. And I'm tucking it in. Now, the next thing, what have I left out? Oh, <laughs> so there's poppy seeds as well, the black um, sesame seeds, and we have cilantro. So the black sesame seeds, what we, what it's calling for. Okay, it said a four, one fourth of a um, teaspoon of poppy seeds, but the poppy seeds is really the garnish. So okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them around and then I have my cilantro that I'm going to pull out and I'm going to do like a rough chop as well. Okay. How's everybody? Is everybody following along okay? Everybody doing good? Stacy, we can't hear you. If you're talking to us. <laughs> No, I'm doing good. I'm not talking. Awesome. <laughs> but I need to know <laughs> where make... this laundry goes, but he's going to tell me. Yes, you will. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so um, I did say that you can, if you wanted to add sriracha, you can. Um, if you do have jalapenos in there, so you want to be kind of vigilant as far as it being super hot. Um, if you wanted to add soy sauce, you can add soy sauce, um, whatever you can. But you see how you can make it your own. And so I'm going to, in the middle, and so I'm going to bring it up so that way you can see. Beautiful. Very nice. So it's basically a party going all the way around it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Man, I should have ate something beforehand. It's beautiful. Oh, oh, that looks wonderful. And yeah, and if the lime. Wait, wait. Show us again. Oh, nice. Good job, Jamie. The lime. So what you want to do with the lime is squeeze it a little bit and then pour it over. But then tuck your lime in as well. Don't forget to send us pictures of your balls. But now you have some delicious ramen. Wow. On a Thursday. Looks like it took us under an hour to make. What a Thursday. <laughs> that looks awesome. How's everybody doing? Oh, good job, Steve and Joanne. They're already macking on it. How is the taste? Getting thumbs up there. They look to be enjoying. Nice. I think they're using chopsticks too. Even better. <laughs> How is your broth? How's the broth, Joanne and Steve? <laughs> We're getting thumbs up.
You know, you can put red pepper flakes in there too. That would be good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Amber said she doesn't know how to give a thumbs up, but she she has one. <laughs> you click the reactions icon. That's where the thumbs up is. Here, I'll I'll do it for you. <laughs> And uh, for those of you uh, who are new to community cooking, um, you guys all have my email in the um, Zoom link. Please send us pictures of your bowls because we like to post it when we post the YouTube video. Thanks, Jamie. She's going to go eat. Please do. Yeah, don't, don't let your ramen get cold <laughs> on our account. The whole point is to make it and eat it. <laughs> Bye, Jamie and Michael. Thanks. Is everyone at the done part? We, you know, you're cooking. We, there's no chef left behind. No, we never leave a chef behind. Does anybody need help finishing their bowls? Everybody with their cameras off doing good? Amber said, Oh, wait, Joelle said, not what I expected, but I'm curious to try it. Thank you. No problem, Joelle. And Amber said, this was amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming, Amber. Mark's doing great. Excellent. Thanks, y'all. It smells good. <laughs> I feel like I can smell it too. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. There's a lot of ginger in that. It must have a strong ginger flavor. Correct. Um, the, with the ginger, it kind of cooks down, so it's not intimidating. That was one of the things where when we were testing it, we were like, okay, let's start with a little, and then once we hit that right place, it, it's like, okay, you know. But when you toast the ginger up, it takes on a whole different flavor. Well, does it? Because I, I've used it in Chinese food, and it's like, boy, don't put much of that stuff in there. Yeah, and do know that, um, so when you're eating it, like when you chop it and you're like actually eating the pieces of ginger, it's way different than when you're combining it into a stock because you're just adding it for flavor and you're only taking the stock um, of what's here. You're only taking it from it, so you won't be chewing the ginger because that is an intense taste. Oh, right, right, because you're leaving it in the pot. Mm -hmm. Good point. Did Mike ever make it, Paul? No, I didn't see him. <laughs> <laughs> I have to find out. I, I was late to tell him because 5.30 comes faster than you <laughs> might imagine. I know. <laughs> I barely I, made it today myself. <laughs> I've been under the weather, and I just find it today. This afternoon, I could get out, mow the grass, and do other things, and fix some plumbing, and, 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 and then I had to take a shower. Sure, sure. <laughs> but, uh, hey, that's a good show. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> and, and the chef is very good. I like her. Yeah, Jamar is awesome. I'm glad you came. Definitely. Jamar, I'll be back. <laughs> so you said I'll be back. I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow you get the update with uh, tacos, but if you go to Oh, here, I'm going to share my screen and show the tacos. OK. Hey, hold on. I'm going to share a picture of uh, next month's tacos that Jamar has already made a demo of. Everybody see those? Uh-huh. Those are veggie tacos. Uh, One's vegetable and one's with jackfruit. Oh, that's different. Yeah, one has like, what is it? Beans and cauliflower? Okay, and um, roasted, roasted bell peppers, cauliflower, um, red onions. It's, yeah. And then we also will be making salsa in it as well. Awesome. Uh -huh. But that, if you want to see the picture, go to the Coos Bay Library site. But tomorrow, you'll all get the ingredients via Zoom when I update them in the morning. Mm -hmm. 
Kathy said, I'm cooking for one, so I decided to watch this time, but I look forward to trying this. It looks delicious. Awesome, Kathy. I'm glad you made it. Yeah, that's a lot of work for one person. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but and, you can Kathy, always... Uh, hopefully tomorrow, but if not tomorrow, next week, it will be on our YouTube channel, so you can follow along at your own speed. You can pause it if you need to, um, and all the ingredients will be under the video. Uh, on you could just uh, search Coos Bay Library for our channel on YouTube. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Love you, son, and uh, good job. All right. Love you too, Dad. Take care. Very well. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. How do we shut this down now? Let's see. <laughs> In the bottom right, you should have a leave button. Oh, he got it. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye, Dad. Hey, this was awesome. Yes, good job. Thank you for hanging out with me on the Thursday. Yes, oh, thanks for joining us. Anybody else have any questions or comments? We're not in a hurry here. I think Joanne does. Okay, it's back. How do you store it, uh, the unused portion, Jamar? Good question. Oh, the, um, after the stop? Yeah, I would put it in a Tupperware. It also, you can also freeze it as well. Um, you can store it in the fridge. I would freeze it. Um, and you know, if you want to store it in a mac in a mason jar and freeze it in a mason jar, all that you have to do is just leave a good gap from the top. Most because when things freeze, it expands, and that's oh, why you end up with point. broken mason jars in the freezer. So if you um, you can take a mason jar and just fill it halfway up. And then freeze them, and then that way you can pull it out any time. But I will freeze it with the with the um, onions and the cloves and the star anise in it. So that way, when you boil it again and you defrost it, it still has that pungent um, taste. Not pungent, but that what really about, good taste. What about the noodles? Can you freeze those too, and do you do it separately? Mm. Yeah, I've never mm. frozen noodles. Frozen noodles, because I think like when you if you Freeze the noodles and then you re um like reboil them. They might turn mushy. Yeah, you'll lose the firmness. But you can also, if you want to do, they also hold up really good as far as in the fridge. I know. Um, but I have never frozen on the noodles. Okay. Yeah, I'll often keep like some noodles overnight in the fridge for the next night. Mm -hmm. and it's usually okay to heat it up in the pan, but. I probably wouldn't keep it too long. Freezing could make it really mushy, I would think. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Good question, though. What if you put that base in the fridge, Jamar? How long would it keep in the fridge? What, the um, stock? Yeah. I think stock will, I will keep it in the fridge at least up to five days. I wouldn't, okay. after five days, I wouldn't. That's just like rule of thumb, five sure. to seven days. After five to seven days, you know, you run the risk of it expiring or losing a lot of flavor and things like that. So sure, sure. Good question. Kathy said thanks, Jamar. Hey, thank you. Yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. Yeah, it was great as usual. Thank you. Thanks, Jamar. Nice. Glad you guys are enjoying it. Take care, y'all. Mark said much thanks. Hey, thanks, thank Mark. you. Thank you.